You got to call Steve. 458 Doc is a number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Lee. Lee, what's on your mind? Well, I heard one of your gentlemen comment about this. I'm going to kind of paraphrase it. it. What you were saying about the social norms trickling up into the federal laws, is that a fair assessment that they start in the lower uh, jurisdictions and then they finally migrate into the federal? No. They originated from they originated from social norms at like time zero, you know, 1787 or whatever, when when the delegates got together. The laws that they agreed upon at that right. date were in large part the social norms in the colonies. Okay, uh, but since now, then, that, s- oh, since okay. then, it has been the hammer from the top onto the people below. Oh, okay. That's the part I didn't infer was the, I was going to just say, how do we explain the EPA, just for instance? Oh, yeah, no, exact. But, but that's, okay. that's the rub is people initially, they'll agree to some law because they go, this is what we're doing anyway. No problem, just, right? I, we, we have slaves anyway, you know, what the hell? And, yeah. and then they decide later, they go, slavery is a repugnant, immoral, disgusting institution, and we want, we want rid of it. And then the Supreme Court tells Dred Scott, go back to your owner. He owns you. You are not a free man. Right. So so it starts, uh, it's easy to pass a law when everybody agrees with it. And then when, when the situation changes, the law, the codified law is not dynamic. And so it, it traps people into a, um, a certain standard yeah, that, right, that may or may not uh, be relevant anymore. So. Okay, no, thanks a million. Yep. Thanks, Lee. Bye. Appreciate the phone call. 458-TALK is a number of you got a comment for Patriots Lament. Right. Yeah. But what I will say, though, about the... the there is still a process to repeal these laws, although it be onerous. It it in some way puts the brakes on things so that they aren't done just because the winds changed briefly. Let, let me ask you, Matt, how many laws can do you know of off the top of your head that have been repealed? I, I don't. Da, but that would da, be da, that would be the same da, as to da. say how many House bill resolutions were passed last year. I don't know that Mo- number either. Matt, I, I think that historically you're going to find that there are virtually no laws that are repealed. What they what happens is that some of them are vacated. They are they are ruled on by a judge or by a jury and been, you know look this law is not enforceable. This law is no longer worth being on the books. But they're not often stricken from the books. In fact, let me give you a really good example off the top of my head. Uh, back in 19, what was it, 17, 18, when they passed the income tax, that was supposed to be a temporary thing, right? Still temporary? How about, uh, and then and then they started in, during World War II, 1941. They, okay. As long as you already had the income tax, they started the automatic withholding. Well, I, re- I remember the, I remember, you know, they, the, the phone tax for the, what was it to pay for the Spanish-American War, and they just finally got rid of that a few years ago, or some silly thing? There's uh, there's an interesting effect uh, that, that you're talking about, Steve, and I actually just talked about it yesterday uh, to a group of students, and it's called the Higgs Ratchet Effect. Uh, this economist Robert Higgs at the Independent Institute um, characterized it. So he looks at he looks at a graph of um, government as a percentage of GDP in the United States from its founding to today. And it started out very low, and then you had the War of 1812, and whenever you have a war, you have a spike, because the government has to steal money and conscript people and whatever, so the government becomes a bigger percentage of the economy. And when that spike goes down after the war, it never returns to its original level. And then you go along, and then you have the Civil War, and you have this massive spike, and then it doesn't return to its original level. Then you have World War I, World War II, the Cold War, and after each of these things... There is a downward trend immediately after the war, but it never goes back to where it was before the war. And um, he applies this not only to economics in the in the financial sense, but he applies it to um, laws, like the number of laws on the books. You could look at the pages in the Federal Register or something like that. Um, he applies it to the police state, um, uh, to the number of people's rights that get taken away versus the you know the rights that people supposedly can get back, and he looked at it um, in a context of history, too. And historically, uh, the ratchet can't be turned back, right? That's what a ratchet is. It always clicks forward. Um, and he says the ratchet, you know, basically he says, you know, the ratchet winds up until it explodes, like the end of the Roman Empire. And then things go back to uh, to zero, right? Because the, the state gets so wound, so tight, that it just ceases to exist. Oh, I would certainly agree with that, where there are... There are there's, y- y- 
there may be breaks on the system, but there is no reverse. And uh, so, you know, you so, can But then how can you talk about, well, there are, there are, there are procedures to repeal well, a law. But there are. I'm not saying that they're used, but there are procedures. <laughs> okay. All right. 458-TALK is the number. Let's go to the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Good morning, uh, gentlemen. This is John. John, good morning. Hey, I appreciate the conversation. It, it reminds me of a class we took at the university several years ago. An indoctrination class? <laughs> uh, no, sir. It was called. Uh, it was actually one that was worth, worth taking. It was called uh, Classical Political Theory. And we spent a, a whole semester arguing uh, the question of if there was natural law. And the one, the one gentleman that talks about our laws coming from social norm, I think, takes the side that there isn't natural law. That is, that, that the nature, that the source of justice is, is an evolving, changing social norm, whereas the, the, um, the people like, um, who, who argue for natural law, uh, if ultimately we're, we're arguing that, that it's, it's permanent, it's in the nature of things, and uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, who was the highlight of the course for, for me, he reconciled the whole thing to Scripture. That is the, the argument uh, of the Greek and the Roman philosophers uh, about natural law. He showed, he showed that God himself is the, the source of justice and the source of right and wrong. It's built into the nature of things, and that's what our whole country is built on. That's what the, the argument of the Declaration if you if if you gentlemen un- understand the moral argument they were they were making, it was even though they were slaveholders, it was that there is a wrongness in slavery that that is that is not right. I, I mean it's 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 real. It's it's something for all people of all times. It isn't because if 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 you think while well, slavery uh, that are it's morally repugnant, it's it's wrong just because of it's a new social norm. Then then you also hold out the fact that it would be just as fine for eventually the social norm to change back and us to have slavery again. Yeah, um, no, I I actually agree with you that w- with what you say about natural law, you know, it being uh, built into nature, um, that you actually see that with slavery. One of the one of the forces that was ending slavery in Western Europe was um, simple economics. It was more profitable to employ people without pointing guns at them and putting them in chains. And I think that validates natural law, because if there is a law that's built into nature, then being in congruence with that law would, would make your life more prosperous, right? I, but I think the interpretation, man's understanding of natural law, is constantly evolving. We are discovering natural well, that's law why, as we go that's through. That's why time. we need. Yeah, that's why we need to be immersed in in the Word of God, and we need we need His Spirit and our in directing our conscience because of and an informed conscience is well in accordance with natural law. John, how do you how do you address that to somebody who doesn't necessarily believe in the Word of God? Because you, you're making an argument that appeals to uh, a religious or which point of God? view. Uh, Steve, uh, Steve, what I what I do is I is I give them the Word of God. Okay. The, the word of, the word of God speaks to people's hearts, and it, and and Jesus commanded his disciples to teach to teach the things that he commanded. So we. We, we, we give them the Word of God, and it's living and powerful. And God, God that's up to God them to convict their conscience, show them right and wrong. Convicting their conscience, that's an interesting uh, turn of a phrase, John. I'd like to return to that idea when we come back from the break. 458-TALK is the number. You've got it on KFAR. This is Patriots Lament. They are the home of Fox News and Fairbanks. Fox News Radio, I'm Karen Regal. Libyans have been lining up to see the body of ousted dictator Muammar Gaddafi. It is lying in a commercial freezer in a mall in the town of Misrata. After you get over the weirdness of it, uh, looking at uh, Gaddafi himself, the leader, uh, ex-leader, uh, he looks in fairly good shape except for that wound to the to the head. The rest of his body was covered. Fox's Greg Palcott reporting. Islamic tradition requires a body be buried within 24 hours. There is no word on when Gaddafi may be buried. Getting ready to come home. Home. President Obama says the vast majority of American troops will be out of Iraq by the end of the year. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta. We brought the war to an end. Now the question is what kind of continuing relationship do we want to have with them? Uh, and that's something to be worked out based on, on what they believe their needs are. 4,400 American troops were killed in the Iraq war. Fox News, we report you decide.
We report it, you respond to it. Fairbanks is listening. This is Local Talk Radio.